Yeah, man, sup of purples. As promised, I'm doing a revamp tutorial for Vocodyne in Logic Pro because that's the most common question. And I don't blame you. You are not stupid. It is confusing. But we're going to go through this step by step and clear out any possible potholes. First, let's check our audio settings. Uh, since the latest version, your buffer size doesn't make as much of a difference. Go as low as your computer and your interface can handle. Other than that, just copy what you see on the screen here. Make sure that your audio interface is selected. If there's any setting that you see on my screen that you don't have on yours, it could be that you haven't activated the advanced mode. So go into advanced here in the settings and make sure that's enabled. Also, you want to go to audio MIDI setup and make sure that the sample rate of whether you're using the internal sound card or an interface, it's set to 44.1 or 48 kilohertz. This, uh, if you're getting no sound at all, this could possibly be the cause of it if you're following everything else correctly. If you have trouble monitoring the sound as you're playing it, make sure that auto input monitoring is off and that low latency monitoring mode is off too. For sidechaining input processing pr plugins like this, Logic handles it a bit differently, so that's essential. We have a MIDI track already. I'm gonna make an audio track for our microphone, and I'm gonna triple check that I've selected the correct input for this. And this would be whatever input your microphone is connected to. In my case, input one. I'm gonna activate record here, do a quick mic check, and uh, take this opportunity to adjust the gain on my interface. Just make sure it's nice and loud, but not clipping. I'm gonna rename this instrument track to Vocodyne, just for clarity's sake and switch out the instrument to Vocodyne by going to AU MIDI controlled effects, Bless Beats, Vocodyne, Stereo. Now we're gonna plug the audio track as a sidechain input into Vocodyne, and this is a very common mistake. Make sure that you're selecting the audio track and not the input because you can, uh, you can connect the microphone straight into it, but then you're not gonna be able to record it. So this should have the same name as your audio track. Now let's look at the channel configuration. Uh, we need to have both the tracks armed in order to record it. And you'll still hear the original voice, so you want to mute the audio track. And if you still hear your own voice, check your interface so you don't have any direct monitoring setting on there. I'm going to try it out in auto mode first, just to confirm that we're getting the signal through. An important note for Logic, you need to be playing the track. It needs the information from the audio track to play back, and it's not getting it while it's stopped. If you want to monitor it while it's stopped, you can set the sidechain temporarily to your mic input, but now we should be able to both monitor whoa, whoa. and record it while it's playing. Now, just to verify that we can listen to it, whoa, whoa. you shouldn't have to worry about any other settings from here. Now, let's deactivate the auto mode and bring up the virtual keyboard. Make sure both tracks are armed and let's try recording something. If you want to do some practice runs, you can just play the track back and play it. You don't need to record it every time. Whenever you're ready. Yeah. You should be able to play it back now, record again, deactivate the recording yeah. on the tracks. It should stay consistent from here on. Uh, another little bonus tip, if you want to do multiple tracks, I usually end up doing like 10 tracks with different harmonies and stuff. Here's a way in Logic that you can deal with that a little more smoothly than uh, copying the tracks one by one. Shift select, uh, select both of the tracks, right click them and click create track stack. It's nice for keeping it organized. Make sure folder stack is selected. If you pop that open, you'll see our original tracks in there. Yeah. Now we can easily make a copy of this stack track. I'm gonna rename it first. And then all we need to do is command D to duplicate it. There's one little thing you need to do. In the new stack, you need to change the sidechain input on Vocodyne to the new track. In my case, it's going to be called Audio 2. So I'm selecting that. Now we're all good to go. Make sure both tracks are selected, and now we can record a harmony. Yeah. I hope that clears up any confusion and that you get a smooth journey and have lots of incredible fun with Vocodyne. Again, thank you for your support. This has been immensely gratifying for me. Okay, bye-bye.